right? So then I can just click on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm lying, you guys. Um, how do we play? I think you have to share screen, right? So I need to share screen my um, the 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 music video. Okay, cool. So let me um, share screen this. And that's the tab. And then I would play it and then make it full screen. I can mute myself, can I? Are you playing it? Uh, Ms. Van Court, I think you have to unmute yourself actually for us to hear the video. Can you hear it now? Yes. Uh, also, oh. Do you want me to close the chat and all that? Um, no, I don't think I can see the chat. Can not see the chat? Yes. Yes. And Kristen, I remove your name.
We are the students from Castro Valley High School to Black Student Union. And it's Triumph Music Club. And today we will be beginning our four week presentation about the history of African American music in America. This, will, this week we'll be discussing West African and slave music. We have presenting for us today Tara, Treasure of Triumph. Corday, treasurer of BSU. And Miles, co-president of Triad. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please use the Google form in the description and we will respond to them once this part of the presentation has finished. Thank you. Starting off today, we will be talking about West African music and instruments. West African music usually utilizes a lot of polyphonic texture, which are constructed with complex melodies or counter melodies with a wide range of instruments. Singing was a big part of it too. A different amount of voices, layers on top of each other, at different times creating a more fuller and something of For example, having one voice and slowly adding one in a linear or exponential fashion. Some instruments that originated from West Africa included harps, drums, flutes, fiddles, flutes, gongs, other wooden instruments, and other string instruments, etc. Et Many of those instruments that were brought over, quite a few were brought over, have evolved into some very commonly known instruments in today's society. For example, the akonting is a long neck string instrument. Its body usually made from a hollowed out board with skin stretched over the opening. This evolved into the banjo. Some other instruments that are the djembis, which is a drum that can produce different pitches when struck at different areas and a bellophone, which is the ancestor of the marimba, and silent as a mallet percussion instrument. Slave music was usually about the black experience in America. It wasn't usually good, by the way. But this music helped them create a sense of unity and solidarity among themselves. The songs they sang weren't usually regularly codified or authorized by a single person. Instead, there's usually a person st starting them off, and everyone else would have a strong transition into improvised music. This helped them strengthen their sense of unity, and they knew these were their songs. Comparing slave music to traditional West African music, there's a lot of singing, and apparently some would recreate instruments from their homeland. They have many call and response songs, such as Ho oh, Emma Hill, I'd Be So Glad, when the sun goes down, and even more. Most songs were sung in a rhythmic unison, most likely because they take less effort and makes their field work a tiny bit easier. Even past the mountains, the entire ocean, and in the air, the slaves kept their musical culture not only alive, but strong, which is insanely impressive through the pain and racism of slavery they have to endure. Use the Google form in the description to send in any questions. Jubilee sorrows and messages. Jubilees like steal away, swing low, sweet chariot, couldn't hear no and couldn't hear nobody. Um, 
is music that was first started that first started to rise during the 1800s close to when slavery was becoming abolished jubilee music showed the many ways that african americans united when they were emancipated from slavery sorrows like when i was sinking down or you may bury me in the east do not only express sorrow or despair but can be pervaded by a sense of change transcendence ultimate justice and personal worth message songs like follow the drinking board let us break bread together wait in the water and song of the free can also be jubilees or sorrows and sometimes they were just poems they were often incomprehensible to whites and the leaders could protest slave conditions mock masters and mistresses call other slaves to secret meetings and even aid runaways and revolts follow the drinking board is one of the more famous ones but there were many songs used for this purpose especially during the time of the underground Rail railroad we will now be playing when I was sinking down by the Fist Jubilee singers. They were actually the first Jubilee group who initially sang Jubilee songs to raise money for college. Christianity and gospel music. Slaves were almost always indoctrinated into Christianity, so the songs developed out of the slave tradition are mostly religious in nature. For example, songs like Go Down Moses, Roll Jordan Roll, Down, Down the River to Pray, and many, 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 many others. Differences between gospel music and hymns often more driving than traditional hymns. Also, gospel music tended to have choruses, whereas hymns tended not to do that. On the difference between gospel music and traditional West African music, typically more majestic than traditional West African pieces. This isn't to say that gospel music is better sounding than West African music, just that gospel music tends to have more sustained note like there are in hymns. Also, use the Google form in the description to send in questions. Spirituals. A uh, spiritual is a type of religious folk song that is most closely associated with the enslavement of the African people in the American South. Uh, common examples of songs of spirituals include Wait in the Water, Steal Away, and Follow the Drinking Board. There are lots of others, but yeah. Sleeves would gather in groups to sing, dance, and chant together. Um, quite a few spirituals turned out to be message songs about escaping slavery or have lyrics expressing the want for freedom or the hardships of slavery. And so these songs became labeled by some whites as protest songs. Uh, two such songs, Wait in the Water and Follow the Drinking Gourd, are what we will listen to very shortly. We'll listen to excerpts, of, excerpts from them now. Wait in the water, wait. Children wait in the water. Gods are gonna trouble the water. See that band all dressed in white. Gods are gonna trouble the water. The leader looks like the Israelite. Gods are gonna trouble the water. Ooh. Wait in the water. Oh, wait. wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God is going to trouble. God's going to trouble the water. Oh. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, Follow the drinking gourd. There the old man's waiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Oh, the old man's waiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. 
gatherings could ha could be in small groups, uh, probably more familial, like we see in the top picture in the top left picture, or they could be larger, including many of the farms or plantation slaves, like we see in the, on the right picture. Uh, the larger gatherings would often have a leader who would lead the group in call and response style songs. Uh, and sometimes the leader would even improvise verses and then everyone else would follow the lead. Uh, songs that may have been sung, uh, uh, an example is Jesus Leads Me All the Way. One of the justifications for slavery was the idea that slaves are happy and well cared for, which is, of course, untrue. Um, but people believe this because slaves made made music. They sang and they and they danced. But that we know now was not indicative of their happiness. There were many other justifications for slavery as well. Uh, here are a few. To to Christian white people, uh, how they justified enslaving their fellow man was uh, mainly via a mistelling of Genesis 9, 1827, uh, also known as the curse of Ham, where Ham's children were cursed to serve uh, the brothers of Ham. And people believe that Ham's children, Quran, were black people. And so they, they believed that black people were meant to be slaves. Uh, another argument was that black people were genetically inferior to white people. Many scientists at the time had conducted uh, experiments trying to prove this, but none of them ever yielded any real results. The white man's burden was an ideology that many white people had. The gist of that was slavery is important because it is used to educate and civilize black people who they viewed as primitive savages. And the last one we will talk about was uh, how slavery was essential to business. Uh, many American industries, mainly agricultural industries, but uh, some manufacturing industries as well, were saying that if slavery was abolished, it would hurt their businesses. And so they were, of course, against the abolishment of slavery. But all of those are BS. There is no justification for slavery. Well, just, just to make it extra clear. And uh, one last reminder during this part of the presentation to submit any questions, comments, concerns to the Google form in the description. Those will be answered shortly during the discussion portion of this lecture discussion stream. Uh, keep in mind, you can also send in questions during the discussion portion. I don't think that just because this part is over, we're not still responding to questions. We will be here to inform. This is a list of the songs, videos, and websites we used in this presentation. If any of what we were talking about interested you, then feel free to check some of this stuff out, especially the songs. These songs are pretty cool. All of these are also in the description of this video. Many of them are linked. So if you wanted to check them out that way, totally all right. This concludes the presentation portion of this presentation. We will now be moving over to the discussion portion. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone would seem that we do not, we have not received any questions at this time. And so there, it can't really be a Q and A portion if there are no cues. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming and watching. Uh, you can still submit questions. Uh, the very first link in the description is where you can send questions and we will get to them next week. We're streaming next week, Friday, 2 p.m., same time. So uh, still could be answered if you ask. Uh, 
probably going to have to end the stream now. Um, okay. I'll give it a few few minutes just in case there's anyone watching now who has questions. But yeah, for for most of you guys, see you next week. I think. Thanks for thanks for coming. <laughs>